Today, on Always Hungry, we're making one of my favorite soups in the world, the minestroni, which means uh, a bunch of vegetables, some pasta, some white beans, and some Parmesan cheese. Let's get started, baby. Now, before we get started, I wanna bring this blade back to its factory sharpness. And for this, I'm gonna use the Oral Knife Sharpener. Um, very easy to use. So there's two sides to this thing. Side number one, diamond side. Side number two, ceramic side. So you always wanna do diamond first and then ceramic. So what we're gonna do is have our knife ready on the side here of the cutting board. So back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So you, you wanna count 10 seconds in your head. And then, like this, switch around, and then you keep going. Uh, step number two, ceramic side. Let's do the same motion. Keep roll, a roll, a roll, a roll. Keep roll, a roll, a roll. There you go. And then again, switch sides. Boom. Okay. Solid, it's not moving. And you keep going. And now, very important before we start chopping, guys, you gotta get rid of all this steel dust that's on the blade right here. I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but there's like a bunch of dust on the blade here from all the grinding. So you have a nice little leather strap here and you wanna go against the blade, so like this. Like this first, and then same thing on this side. And there you go. Beautiful, clean knife, and it should be sharp as hell. Let's try it. Ready? Pretty fucking sharp. Good to go, let's get started. Now, let's get started with some chopping. What we'll do is get all the mise en place out of the way so then we can focus on the soup. Uh, first thing, the base of the soup is the mirepoix, also called sofrito if you're in Italy. It's basically onions, uh, celery, carrots. You can also add some leek, which I really like, and some garlic and some herbs. So yeah, let's get started. First step, I'm gonna peel those carrots because they're not very uh, clean enough to be uh, thrown in there unpeeled. And what I'll do also is keep all of these vegetable trim trimmings uh, for my vegetable broth. Because you know, we're not gonna put water in there, guys. We're gonna put a beautiful vegetable broth. That's gonna make the soup even better. Carrots are peeled. We're gonna cut the tips off, like so. Same here, same here. And you wanna kind of cut everything. I mean, you could do it like, you know, very nice and fancy and little cubes. But you know what? It's, just, it's meant to be like a rustic soup. Cut these in half first, like this, then like this. So then you can start with one like this. I'm just kind of like, oh, that knife is sharp, baby. Kind of like this, you know? Kind of like this. Okay, carrots all done. Now it's time for celery. Probably take, uh, probably take, uh, this can be good for the soup as well, for the broth, sorry. Let's do, uh, yeah, that should be enough. Three celery stalks. Same thing for celery. We'll cut like this first here. Get some white, white part off, white part off. And then kind of cut right in the middle like this. And then again, in the middle like this. You want everything to be kind of the same size in the end. Everything should be like roughly equal in size. Okay, so now same thing. You start chopping, baby. Okay, here we go. So celery is good. And put that on the side with the carrots for now. Next step, we have some beautiful white onions. So we're just gonna take the skin off like this. Cut in half first. Take the hands off. And the hands 
this off like this. Now we dice away. It doesn't have to be super small. It's gonna be in there for a long time, so don't be worrying about cutting some final dice. You don't need to. Keep it nice, keep it rustic, you know? I like to say rustic, it's very forgiving. Oh, do. that was a horrible chop. There you go. Dice the onion, dice some onion. Then you can do one more chopping to make sure everything is good. And then that's it. We have dice onions, baby. There you go. Okay. Maybe one's enough actually, yeah. We have some beautiful leek here. And what I'll do is just take this part off here. Keep that for, you guessed it, the broth. Also leek is always dirty, so make sure you clean your leeks first. For the leeks, before I put them with my mirror here, what I'll do is cut it in half like this. And hopefully, it's not too, oh, you see this? It's beautiful, guys. There's not even one grain of salt in there. It's beautiful, guys. It's, sometimes, you know, Life gives you lemon, or sometimes life gives you clean leeks. So you know what, today, it's clean leeks, baby. So we're good for chopping. I might do it one more time like this, actually. Yeah, there you go. So keep the core again, and then just chop away, baby. Also, I feel like leek is not very classic or authentic in a minestrone soup, but for me, it's like a, a soup essential, so. If you don't want it, don't put it in there. If you want it, just go for it, you know? Just go for it. Leeks, good. This can go in the broth as well. In the broth of the broth as well. Okay, here we go. Mirepoix, we'll put it in something like this here. So yeah, you can put all of this here, like this in there. Perfect. And also we can add the garlic to this as well if you want. We have some beautiful garlic here, fresh garlic. And probably just trying to crush it like this while cutting myself. There you go. Garlic down. Probably put all of it because it's gonna be a big soup. And you know me, I like my garlic, baby. Now it's time to chop the garlic. There you go, this massive clove. I'm just gonna cut it in half first like this. And then I'll just do first 10 slices. At this stage, I like to add some coarse salt on my garlic so it makes the chopping way easier. So just kind of like run your knife through it like this. And the salt is a natural abrasive, which is gonna make kind of like, it's gonna avoid the, it's gonna prevent, sorry. It's gonna prevent the garlic from sticking to your knife, which is very annoying. You don't have to do a, a super, super fine chop, just kind of like a, a rough chop. A rough chop is good, you know? A rough chop is good, guys. Just like this. Garlic done, okay, cool. And then you can add this to your mirepoix, like this, bam, bam, bam. And et voila. Let's move on to the bouquet garni, which pretty much means a bunch of herbs wrapped up together. Um, for this, I'm gonna use some beautiful parsley uh, stems, not the, the, the leaves, just the stems. I'm gonna use some beautiful bay leaves, fresh bay leaves if you have, even better than the dry. I'll put maybe five in there, it's good. Uh, maybe some rosemary as well. Let's do like uh, three stems of rosemary, like this, like this. This can go back in there. I also have some fresh thyme in here. 
little bouquet of thyme in there as well. So now, um, what I'll do with all these beautiful fresh herbs is, I could just use kitchen twine, but also I'll use this thing here, cheesecloth, which is gonna make everything stay in place. No surprise, no like mouthful of fucking bay leaves when you eat your soup. So here you go, we'll put everything in here. So put all your herbs nicely wrapped in there and then kind of like roll your cheesecloth around it. Just roll this thing like a fat doobie baby. Like this, like this, like this. You can also even get the edges in. And then roll it, there you go. That's good, that's good guys. No surprises, it's gonna stay in there nicely. And then once that's done, once that's done, what to say that? Once that's done, just kind of like make it nice and tight and go around and go around and go around. And then we'll cut it here. And we'll do a little knot. Okay, I got, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. Yay! See? Perfect little bouquet garni. Smell that, bro. Smell that. Right? It's like a little pouch of tea. Okay, cool. So this is good to go. We can put it with our mirepoix here. Et voila. Now, moving on. Now, uh, before we cut everything else, we'll get the vegetable broth going with our trimmings. I also added some beautiful, fresh vegetable to make it the best broth ever. So pretty easy, we got a big pot here, boom. And what we'll do is kind of just like add our vegetable to it, like this. And now we can just put some water all the way up. You can add some beautiful black peppercorn to this. There you go, like this, boom. And you can also add some fresh herbs as well. These can be loose, easy peasy. Get some parsley in there. Get some rosemary in there. Boom. There's no rules, guys, you know? Just put some good stuff in there. And guess what? You got a nice broth coming out just for you. This one is very dark, not good. Bay leaves. And that's pretty much it. And then you put some water all the way up and we'll let it simmer for like 25 minutes. There you go, so you can bring this back here on the stove, full blast, baby. And then bring it to a simmer, bring it to, I guess, to a full boil, and then let it simmer for 25, 30 minutes. And um, it's gonna make the best soup in the world, baby. All right, next. Uh, what we can do is keep going with our beautiful squash here. Kind of same thing as, uh, you know, the mirror pot we have here. We'll just kind of like cut it in small, pieces, roughly same thing as the rest. So what we'll do is cut this in half to start with, like that. Whoop. Beautiful squash, zucchini, courgette, whatever you want to call it, you know? This here, this here. This is good too, you know, we can keep a bit of a green there. It's nice, guys. So, and then we'll just do one more time like this. Whoa, okay. And then we'll do one more time like this. And like I said, guys, you know, keep it rustic, keep it fun. Kind of cut it, and you know, you want some bite. The zucchini also, like, it's gonna be uh, kind of very quick to cook, so don't cut it too small. Because I like a nice little zucchini bite in the soup. But nothing's worse than a fucking overcooked zucchini, guys. When it's like mush. No, 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 not for me, no way, Jose. Okay, same thing, get the tips. And then same in here, and half seas, and two more of this, there you go. And the beauty about the minestrone, it's, uh, you know, everything has a diff, every single ingredient has a different time of cooking, so it's like you want to kind of make sure you add stuff at the right time. If you put everything at the same time, this is going to be mush, 
just not gonna be able to sweat properly in the olive oil. So you know, there's, there's steps to this. It seems easy, which it is, but there's little things that you need to know. There you go. Zucchini, done. Dunsies. Now these can go in there. go boom boom next I have some beautiful potatoes here which are very important to the the whole soup because you're gonna bring a nice amount of starch and make the whole thing thicker nicer same goes for the pasta and the beans the goal is to make everything nice and rich and beautiful so I'm still gonna peel those first What you could do is kind of peel those uh, right before adding them and cutting them right away so you don't have to rinse them uh, to have even more starch. But you know what? We don't need that much starch in there because like I said, we have the pasta going in there as well. We have the beans, so it doesn't need to be over starchy. So, you know, take your time, do nice mise en place, get these in water, rinse them off, get some of the scum of that nasty starchy water and then everyone's happy you know now what we can do is cut some slice like this kind of like if you're gonna do french fries but then we'll go one step further and dice it so like this and now what we can do is Cut these in little batonet. And then like this. Beautiful cubes uh, or diced potatoes. Okay, potatoes can go in a bowl. Then this, uh, we'll put this under uh, running cold water to get all the starch off. So we have the potatoes here in beautiful clear water. And now I want to get all like the cabbage and kale ready for the soup. Uh, you know, you can only use kale or like cabbage if you want, but like I got, I got a nice variety here. Also some nice beautiful broccolini here. So we'll get this guy first, take one layer out like this. And then I'm going to cut the root off like this. Perfect. And then once in half, look at this beautiful cabbage, guys. You know, I love cabbage. I love cabbage so much. Okay. And for this, cut the core, cut the core, cut the core twice if you have to, you know, and then one more. So uh, what I'll do here is just kind of like cut it in uh, nice little slices here. Is that dirty or what? No, it's good, take one more layer off. And then just kind of like run your knife through it like this. Like this. Okay, 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 perfect. So I'll put all of my greens and cabbage in the same bowl like this. Easy peasy. Next, we'll do the purple kale here. Uh, kale, you know the trick, you kind of like just use it, take the stem like this here, and you wanna just kind of like get everything off it. Roll your kale like that. And honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of kale, but in a soup, it just makes sense, it's so good. Kale in there. Next, the green kale. Same thing, we'll just get the stem off of the leaves, like this. Couple like this, a big one like that. One more maybe. That should be plenty of kale for a soup. And then same as a purple kale. Just roll it, roll it, roll it. OK, 
ठीक है Everything and go my big bowl here. Okay, now all the mise en place is done. The hard work is out of the way. Now it's fun time. So I have this massive pot here because you know, lots of stuff. Um, I'm gonna start by sweating our mirepoix, sofrito, whatever you wanna call it. So, you know, Italian cooking means what? Olive oil. And guess what? I have the best olive oil in the world, baby. That's right. Be generous with the olive oil. I'm gonna cover the bottom of the pot. Because remember, this will kind of like be the carrier for all the flavors. So I make sure like that all these vegetables are gonna give all of their flavor to your olive oil, which will be the base of the soup. So what you can do first is throw this in there. Oh yeah, that's generous. And also it's like, for me, a big soup like this, you wanna be seasoning at every single stage of your soup. So obviously mirepoix first, and then you know we can, we'll simmer it down for a while, we can taste it. Always make sure it's properly seasoned. Okay, mix it up. And now what you can do is bring this to medium low and for it's gonna add a nicer texture to the soup and a good bean flavor. I'm gonna take a bit of my broth here, like this. To make it easier to blend. This bit more, there you go. Perfect. And then we'll just get the immersion blender in there and just bend away. Good enough, there you go. Nice little bean puree, baby. And that's it. Now, as you can see, this has been literally sweating. It is all the water in here and everything in there is nice and broken down. Look, beautiful. There's no coloration at this point. You don't want any color. You just wanna break down everything. And these guys have done their job. Everything is now transferred to our oil. Next step, I'm gonna add some tomato paste right in there. I do wanna cook it out a little bit before I add some liquid, so I'm gonna put the Paste in the middle like this. That should be plain actually, there you go. Paste in there. I'm gonna mix everything up and keep that cooking for two minutes before adding the liquid, which is our beautiful vegetable stock. So mix that up. At this point, you can even crank it up a little bit. We'll let that cook down, which is gonna bring down the bitterness of our tomato paste a little bit. And there you go. I'm also gonna add my bouquet garni now at this point because it can sweat a little bit with the rest. There you go. Mix that up. Everything gets to meet each other. The party is starting. We're building flavors, guys, here, you know? We wanna build flavors. Hopefully we can get to Flavor Town right in time for dinner. You know what I mean? Okay. So see here, it's starting to stick a little bit at the bottom. That means only one thing, and one thing only, guys. It's time for our broth, our broth. So here, I have a beautiful chinois strainer, and I'm gonna get my broth right in there. Right in there, don't be shy. Oh yeah. Here you go, guys. Beautiful vegetable broth right in there. Next, we're gonna add the tomatoes. These were whole tomatoes, but I just uh, used the energy blender to mix them, but not too much, like this. Don't waste anything. This here, you can just rinse it with water a little bit. Boom, perfect. 
And now we can also add pretty much, uh, yeah, our little uh, bean puree in there as well. Boom. Again, no ways, guys. Put this in here. Some water. Boom. We can also add your white beans, not pureed. Perfect. That's pretty much it for now. Yeah, and now we'll bring this to a, a simmer. We'll wait 20 minutes and then we'll add our pasta and then uh, our cabbage and kale and then our zucchini and then another 10 minutes and then we're good to go. And then we eat. I almost forgot. Also, potatoes, I strained them. I can go right in there. Okay, and now we wait. I also forgot something very important for a nice minestrone, is I always keep my Parmigiano Reggiano rinds for this reason. If you're doing like a bolognese or a soup like this, this is like a freaking umami flavor booster. So just dip those in there, boop, boop. I'll put three because I have them. And then at the end, you just have to remove them, but it's like really like a pack of flavor. So do not throw these away. All right, so it's been simmering for about 20 minutes. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, wow, look at this beautiful broth. The color is already nice and red. Like a proper minestrone, hey. And now, next, we're gonna add our beautiful pasta. Here I chose some beautiful orecchiette, which just means ears in Italian, as you know, for ears. So you always want to choose some kind of bite-sized pasta. You know, you want to put spaghetti in there. So anything that's like short, farfalle, or you know, even some uh, macaroni, that could work too. So we're just gonna dump these right in there. Et voila. And you always want to make sure you have a good amount of liquid because these are going to absorb a lot of that liquid and you end up with like a big bowl of like thick vegetables and mush, yeah. So make sure you have enough liquid and make sure you keep some room so you can add a little bit if it's too, too thick. So there you go. You can put a timer on for, these pastas were 14 minutes, so we'll put a timer on. Hey Siri! Put a timer for 14 minutes, please. Actually, Siri, put a timer in for 10 minutes, please. Hey, Siri, put a timer for 10 minutes, please. 10 minutes, sorry, man. Thank you. That's why uh, I asked for 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, we're gonna add also our beautiful mix of kale and cabbage and broccoli and our squash. And that's gonna probably take four minutes to cook. So everything will be cooked at the same time and then it's gonna be happy time. And at the end, we're gonna also cut this beautiful bread here that I have. I have a nice piece of thick bread. We're gonna grill that stuff with olive oil. Then we're gonna serve it. I'm gonna be happy. There you go. Okay, so now, pasta is almost cooked. So we can go ahead and add our beautiful zucchini. Hey, so right in there. There you go. Go, oh, yes. Look at this. And we can even put our greens right in there as well. Now it's gonna seem like it's a lot, and it is a lot, but hopefully, if I'm not wrong, <laughs> it's all gonna go down real quick. Look at this, you know? Just beautiful vegetables, guys. Gonna be a great soup. I'm just gonna put this deep in there. See, it's perfect, guys. Big, beautiful pot full of deliciousness. And now we're gonna simmer this for a Siri. Set a timer for five minutes, please. Five minutes, starting now. Thank you. There you go. And now, well, this is the last. And final stretch, what we can do is cut our bread and have a nice little toast ready. So everything will be ready at the same time. And you know what? Life is good like that sometimes. Life is good like that. So now, beautiful bread here. 
I got a nice slice right in the middle. Right in the middle. That's a nice little bread. Then I want a thick slice like this. There you go. There you go. Okay, now we're just gonna put some beautiful olive oil on this bread. Like this. And then both sides. All right, so we have a nice hot cast iron grill pan. I'm gonna put the bread right in there. You know, just make sure it's nicely covered with oil on the sides too, everywhere. Boom, and then right in there. And then to make sure we get a nice even crust, I have this thing on top, nice little weight. Let's check out our bread. I think it should be good to go for a little flippy flippy. Oh, look at this, beautiful. The weight back on there. There's the sun you're looking for. Okay, so the bread's good to go. Nice and toasty here. Beautiful bread. I'm gonna just rub this off with some garlic real quick while it's super hot and crispy. And as you can see, it's almost like grating the garlic right on the toast. And right away, the smell is just crazy. I really love, like this shit. Just rub it on both sides. There you go. Oh yeah. On the edges, everywhere. There you go, beautiful garlic toast. And what we can do is cut this in half, like this, on a bias. Put our bread right there on the side. Boom. Now, time for soup. Oh, now it's time for the star of the show. Our beautiful Mestroni soup. Okay. So, here, generous scoop. This, in the fall, is like the best thing in the goddamn world. Oh, fuck. Big generous bowl. There you go, that should be good. A little more, a little more liquid. Perfect, okay. And now, you already know it's not over. It's garnish time. Easy peasy. You can also add some fresh basil if you have. I don't have any, so I'm just gonna put some parm right on top. Grate some parm. Obviously, you know, generous with the parm. Uh, also up to parm, also nice little olive oil for sure on top. This. Some black pepper. That's all I have, perfect. And a bit of flour de sel on top. And here you go. Minestrone. And now, my favorite part of all the shoots, tasting time. Let's do this. I might just take some bread right now and dip it in there. Oh baby. So good. Perfect meal for fall. And get back in there. Mm. Mm. Put some stuff on there. The bread is so good with the garlic, it's crazy. Mm. 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 Okay, guys, I'm gonna finish this beautiful bowl of soup. In the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Always Hungry, Please subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, all that stuff. It really helps us into making more of these beautiful videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.